But let's welcome in Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. Congresswoman, thanks for joining us today. So great to be with you, Jen. Good to see you. So I want to talk to you about the testimony we heard on Capitol Hill, senators grilling the acting director of the Secret Service as well as the deputy director of the FBI. What are your takeaways from what we saw today as, you know, here we are, I think, 17 days later, um, still searching for answers? You know, I, I listened to the entire hearing, and I will say, with the exception of a few senators who saw this as a political opportunity to make a statement about quote unquote gun control and you know wax poetic about you know their their particular leanings i thought that it was pretty pretty straightforward and really was a a glimpse at how truly glaring some of the issues are within the secret service but also in the joint operability operations when it comes to law enforcement for high value targets now as the wife of a first responder, my husband, Matt, he's a SWAT medic. He he has been talking about this, of course, for weeks, saying, you know, this is absolutely a failure of communication. This is absolutely highlighting the glaring issues that we have. But I was disappointed that no one was talking about the failures of the Senate and the role that they played leading up to the failures in the communication. For example, most communities only have a single tower. That prime tower goes down, all your communications go down. So. You can look at the Senate and say, yes, they're they're trying to hold these individuals' feet to the fire. And I think Acting Director Rowe did a good job of really laying out and taking uh, accountability and responsibility. And certainly there will be more firings and things that happen in the weeks to come. I, I am sure of it. But that being said, I think Americans who are frustrated with these hearings and these endless investigations can also take action in saying, listen, Senate, you let Spectrum Auction Authority lapse. That's where those bans, those communication bans exist. Why are you not doing your damn job? Hey, why are you not funding the rural communications like Butler, Pennsylvania relies on? These are the things that everyday Americans can do in reaching out to the Senate and help get those items fixed. You know, you mentioned something, uh, Congresswoman, that I, I wanted to ask you about, and that is one of your colleagues, uh, one of your Democrat colleagues, this Senator Maisie Hirono. Um, she used her time to advocate for gun control. We heard Senator Dick Durbin uh, do a little bit of that as well. Is it your experience that Democrats that are in, involved in some of the questioning, uh, both in the House and Senate, do you feel that they're in this for the right reasons, or is it to further a political agenda? Well, I can't think of a single incident where uh, my colleagues on the left have, have not taken an opportunity to really go after uh, the Second Amendment. And as we know, the only thing that stops a bad man with a gun is a good man with a gun or woman. And so I think that it's right. wholly irresponsible for these individuals to sit there on a high horse and, and essentially lecture law-abiding Americans about why they should not have access uh, to weapons that allow them to protect themselves and their family and their property. Now, I, last time I checked, murder was already a crime, and we've seen where gun-free zones don't work. We've seen where people who are intent on doing acts of evil and violent acts, they will do so by any means necessary. And so I think that this is just wholly irresponsible, again, playing politics quite literally with people's lives, and it doesn't get us anywhere closer to finding out where the breakdowns truly were and how we move forward in fixing it. Yeah, there, there's a lot to, to learn here, and I think a lot of um, change that needs to take place in, in terms of what we've seen yeah. so far. Um, you know, President Biden obviously appointed uh, the former Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle. He will appoint the next one, most likely. I, I haven't seen a timeline for that. Um, but given what we've seen thus far um, in hearing from the, the deputy or the acting director, rather, um, do you think that we need change? And, and what would you say to the president as he looks to make this decision that could impact either his current vice president if, if she wins office in November? Member, or again, the former president who nearly lost his life about a month ago. One, I think transparency is absolutely key. And so having this position go before the Senate as a Senate confirmation is something that we can immediately change. Um, that I think is for sure a fix that I think will help ease the minds of several involved. And at the end of the day, Congress respectively is responsible for making sure that they're budgeted, that they're funded, and that they have all the resources necessary to do the job that they've been tasked with. So why aren't they coming before the Senate for confirmation? That would be the first thing. The other thing is I would have them streamline the access to documents and document preservation. That's something that has been wholly inadequate. The fact that we don't have recordings from the radio transmissions of the Butler, Pennsylvania event 
is unacceptable from start to finish. So I think a full-blown protocol reboot, looking at ways that we're not only seeing them it do redo their internal protocols, but how they interface with local and state law enforcement, that has to be known. I would also be looking at further thir further ways that we can clean up the agency. Now we know that the, the former director Cheadle, she resigned. Did she lose her, her clearance? Is she losing her benefits package? Did she get a severance package? No one has been able to answer these questions. And I think that's critically important to really let the American people know that true accountability is happening. And so there's there's some key starting points there that I think would reassure Americans, as well as the candidates that are relying on the protection of the Secret Service. Yeah, such great points there, Congresswoman. And, and to hear uh, moments ago from a, a former Secret Service agent who said, we can never get enough training. We can't get enough training. We don't get those opportunities yeah. because we're on the go so much. Um, I think that's obviously something that they need to prioritize as well. Um, we have to leave it there, but Congresswoman Kamek from the free state of Florida, always great to see <laughs> you. And thanks for taking time today.